The first thing you need to know is uh, this. The question, do diets work? Now, do any of you know the statistics related to diets, the best diets that we have in existence? Weight Watchers, let's say, right? Which is widely regarded as the best diet on the market. What is the success rate of these diets? Does anyone know? You have a guess, what do you think? How many think it's 50%? 50% of people. How about 30%? Think 30% maybe? Maybe 20% of people get results over the long run? So a few of you for 20%. The answer is less than 5%. Less than 5%. Now, they define success as a, a reduction of 5 to 10% of your weight, initial weight, and maintaining that over a two-year period. Okay, Less than 5% of people are able to accomplish that. In other words, they gain the weight back. Okay, So that means 95% of people gain the weight back. But it's worse than that. Because here's this number here, 66%. 66% of those people who fail at these diets end up fatter two years later than they were before the diet. In other words, diets really do not work. Okay? And here's the thing that you need to understand. Here's a distinction, because a lot of you are saying, yeah, but that's because people don't have willpower. Yeah, that's because we're all lazy gluttons. You know, we all have these things. But here's the thing that you need to keep in mind. A solution that works in the short term, that cannot be maintained over the long run, is not a solution that works, period. Right? That's the distinction we all need to understand. I'm going to say it one more time, because I think we forget it. A solution that works in the short run that you cannot maintain over the long run is not a solution that works. That is what we're looking at with these diets. So let's talk about why. This is a rule, and I think Keone and I would call this a law. It's our law, but I think you'll know and get why we call it this really quickly. But we call it the rule of metabolic compensation. So here's a seesaw, right? Here's what you need to know about the metabolism, probably everything you need to know about the metabolism. If you push on one end, eat less, exercise more, sleep less, stress more, lose fat, the body will push back against you. It will compensate. So if you eat less, what happens? You get hungry, your energy gets less, and you start craving. If you exercise more, what happens? It's natural, right? You get hungrier. You get more cravings. That's interesting, right? Eat less, exercise more. How many have heard that mantra? Yet you do that, and what happens? You get more hunger, less energy, and more cravings. The very thing you're being told to do is making it far less likely you will be able to do it. Here's another thing. Lose fat, and what happens? Your body will want to regain that fat. It's just what it does. It compensates. Lose muscle. What does your body want to do? It wants to regain that muscle. The thing that you need to understand is that the body compensates constantly. So you might say, but Jade, how do I know if my body is compensating? Very simply, something I call HEC, H-E-C, hunger, energy, and cravings. If you are having hunger, if you are having increased cravings, if your energy is unstable, any diet that you are on, any program you're doing is not going to last. You are going to be one of the 95%, and you may end up being one of the 66% that end up fatter in the long run. If you cannot control heck, if your heck is not in check, I like to say, then you are going to be a diet statistic. You are going to be 95% or 66%. How many of you have been, and I'm going to raise my hand on this, how many of you have fallen into the 95% category? How many of you have fallen, leave your hand up, if you've fallen into the 66% category where you got fatter? I'm going to leave my hand up for that too, because I'm right there with you, right? So let's talk about this a little bit more in depth. Now, don't pay attention to this. I know that this scientists love this kind of stuff. But there's some people in here that are science, and they want to see the science, right? So I'm just showing this to say, look, these are studies over the last 100 years, just a sample that Keone grabbed and sent to me, to basically show that, yes, 
The research actually shows dieting does not work and makes you fatter. In fact, some of this research suggests that the very act of dieting may be the reason you're fat in the first place. Okay? Now, this talk is going to be all about how to stop dieting but still get the results you want. Okay? But that's there for you scientists because I'm not going to cover a whole lot of science today and I'm not going to give you a biochemistry lesson today. I'm going to give you some very practical to-dos. But first, you have to understand what's going on. So here's a person, a pear shape. She goes on a diet. She becomes a smaller, mushier pear. Okay? She doesn't really change her shape. And then she becomes one of the 66%, and now she's a little bit larger pear. She's distraught. She decides, I need to do that again. So she goes on the diet. She loses the weight. But then she's, again, the 66%. She's an even larger pear. She gets upset one more time and thinks, I'll do it again. And what happens? She's even bigger than she was prior. Now, this isn't everybody, but this is a large percent of the population. Why is this going on? Because of the law of metabolic compensation. Here is the reason why. Because we do not make the distinction between weight loss and fat loss. Weight Watchers doesn't care, and, and not to bash on Weight Watchers, because I think Weight Watchers does some very good stuff, right? It does some very good stuff. It helps you keep track of things, helps you be more mindful of your food. So this isn't a bashing session against Weight Watchers. They're pretty good at what they do. It's just that they're missing something, and what they're missing is this distinction. I want you to pay attention to this. Two guys, both 5'10", both 215 pounds, both labeled obese if they came to see Keone and I in the clinic, right? This person is obviously not obese. Why? This person has muscle. This person, not so much. Has muscle, but it's different, right? This person has a higher percent of muscle versus this person. Now, if I put this person on a weight loss program, what's going to happen? He is going to get bigger, potentially, in the long run if he's one of those 66%. But in the short run, he is going to get smaller for a short amount of time. But his shape is not going to change into this. He's just simply going to become a smaller apple shape, right? Not necessarily what we all want, right? Let's look at this looking at a female. So large pear shape goes on the standard diet, right? Eat less, exercise more. Remember, you can be burning calories, you can be losing weight, those calories and that weight may or may not be fat. They may or may not be fat. People, for some reason, right, we humans are funny, we, so for some reason we think, oh, I lost weight, I must have lost fat. Not, not being aware that I could have lost water, I could have lost stored sugar, and I could have lost muscle. And if I lost muscle, that's a problem because that's one of the things that's associated with rebound yo-yo weight gain. So she goes on that weight loss diet, and she is a larger pair here. She becomes a smaller pair, but a smaller and mushy pair. And the reason why is because she lost muscle and fat. It's not that she didn't lose fat here, right? But she lost muscle too. And this state, this smaller, mushy pair without as much muscle as she once had makes it far more likely that she will go back to this, but potentially even bigger. Instead, if we put her on a fat loss plan where we did everything possible to maintain her muscle mass and everything possible to control heck, hunger, energy, and cravings, she is not only going to change her shape and become more a tight lean hourglass shape, but she's far less likely to revert back to this. But to get to this state, you have to stop dieting. So today I'm going to show you how to stop dieting. Now, one thing about you women in the audience, you guys are funny with this weight thing. You're funny with this weight thing. <laughs> Look at these two. 5'5", five, five, 150 pounds, BMI 25.8. Look at the difference in the body. Can you understand that they, I mean, both of these physiques are beautiful as far as I'm concerned, okay? But this physique, here's the difference. This physique, okay, has more balanced hunger, energy, and cravings, is less likely to go into rebound weight gain, and has a more efficient metabolism than this one. So forget about the look, right? This one 
is far healthier, far more likely to stay this way over the long run. Okay? So it's not about aesthetics. Both of these physiques are beautiful. One is just more likely to stay, and the other one is more likely to go. This person is likely to gain the weight back and become a bigger pair. This person, less likely. Okay, does that make sense? Now, fat loss foods. There is no such thing as a food or a supplement or anything else you can do that's magically going to make fat melt off of you. Okay? I'm going to say that again because it's important <laughs> from my perspective. There's no foods you can eat that are going to magically be like, oh, now you're in fat burning mode because you ate celery. If it was possible to overeat celery, which I don't think it is, you could probably get fat off celery. It's just almost impossible. So it brings us to the distinction, what exactly is a fat loss food? Well, this makes the distinction. Now, those of you who have seen this before, some of you have seen me talk, and I love this example, so you can't answer. You're disqualified from answering this. But for those of you who have never seen this, I want you to answer the question. This is a donut. This is a chicken breast. Which has more calories? Which of these two has more calories? Say, so who for the donut? Okay. Who for the chicken breast? Okay, so you're both wrong. I love, I love that trick. <laughs> It's the same. I guess you could say the chicken breast has one more, right? So the chicken people win. But it's the same. 250 calories for the donut, 251 calories for the chicken breast. Now, I can eat donuts. I like donuts. Part of the reason I was one of the 66%. Because I like donuts. I can eat five donuts, no problem. Sit down with a cup of coffee. I'll, I'll tear through five donuts. Okay? How many of you guys can eat five donuts with me? Okay, so some of you here, right, I can eat them. And actually, if you put seven in front of me, I'd probably eat those too, to be honest with you. I cannot eat five to seven chicken breasts. I can't. Raise your hand if you think you could sit down and eat five to seven chicken breasts. Maybe if I told you I'd give you $1,000 if you eat five to seven chicken breasts, you could, right? But I could sit down and eat five donuts and enjoy it and like it and be happy about it, right? And still feel hungry again an hour or two later. And feel pretty bad an hour or two later, too, by the way, right? But if I ate five chicken breasts, would I be hungry an hour or two later? Would my energy be imbalanced or probably balanced? Would I be craving donuts again? But if I ate those donuts, I'd be craving donuts again, wouldn't I? This is funny. I want everyone to look around because this, it's, it's like these aha moments, right? Everyone in the room, if you sit down and you had three donuts, let's say. Let's make it a little bit more realistic. How many of you would be hungry again for something sweet within the next two to four hours? Look around the room, guys. So it doesn't matter what your favorite fat loss guru or weight loss guru says or what anybody else says. You can look around the room. We just did an experiment right here. We know this. We are humans. We live in a body that compensates, right? So then you have to ask yourself, what is the difference then between the donut and the chicken breast? If it's not calories... What is it? What is it about the chicken breast that stabilizes, heck, hunger, energy, and cravings? The protein, the fat a little bit, but the ratio at least. And this isn't to say you need to eat meat, by the way. I could have made an argument between donuts and broccoli, couldn't I? How many of you can eat six cups of broccoli? You could try. How many can eat six donuts? We can, right? Which one's going to stabilize hunger, energy, and craving? So if you're a vegetarian, this isn't an argument that you need to eat meat. This is basically just saying we need to eat foods that stabilize hunger, energy, and cravings. That is what a fat loss food is, not some magic principle that makes you burn fat. But it's the macronutrients that make the difference. I'm going to give you another one. And again, you guys are disqualified who've seen this, this talk before. Many of you have. But I'm going to give you another one just to drive this home because it's so important. Kashi Goline Crunch. How many of you like this cereal? I do. How many, of you, how many of you see it as a fat loss food? Okay. Many people do. Most of the time when I say that, people will say, you know what? Yeah, that's a weight loss food. That's a fat loss food. I would argue it's a weight loss food, not a fat loss food. But here's what I want you to focus on. A bowl of Kashi Goline Crunch. Okay. I'm going to give you two meals. The first meal, a bowl of Kashi Goline Crunch, a glass of orange juice with skim milk. Okay. That's your breakfast. Or an eight egg white omelet, eight egg whites, okay? A cup of mushrooms, 
a cup of tomato, a cup of spinach thrown in those egg whites, a side of half a cup of blueberries, and a large glass of green tea. So you got those two meals, right? Which has more calories, the one on the left or the right? They're not the same, but good guess. This one has more calories. The bowl of cereal has more calories. Which one has more food? No brainer, right? This one. Which is going to control hunger, energy, and cravings? If I said, hey, we're all going out on a hike today, or tomorrow morning, right? It's Saturday. So Sunday, we're going on a hike. We're going up to Stone Mountain, one of my favorite places. We're going to hike all day up there. And you only get one meal. This meal or this meal? Who's going to choose the first meal, the, the one? Look around, guys. Just, just look at, at, at people, right? No one's choosing that meal, right? But who's going to choose this meal? Raise your hand, right? Why? Because this is going to be the one that sustains you longer. This is a weight loss meal. This is a fat loss meal. That's the difference. Again, no magic properties. Just one controls hunger, energy, and cravings. One does not. One controls metabolic compensations. One does not, right? Now, I'm not going to talk much about hormones today. Many people wanted me to, but I want this to be a, a really, I want you guys to go away and have to do. So I'm going to give you some big to do's, but I do want to mention hormones. The difference between weight loss and fat loss is hormones. Weight loss is about calories. Fat loss is about hormones. Now, when I say hormones, everyone thinks estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. Many of you who now know about metabolic effect, know that that's not all there is. But for those of you who don't, I'm not talking about just estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone. I'm talking about all the hormones that when you eat are released that tell the brain, get full fast, stay full for longer, balance energy, and be without cravings. Things like CCK, insulin, ghrelin, leptin, cortisol, all these hormones that control whether or not we will be hungry later, craving later, or having imbalanced energy later, okay? In other words, hormones are what controls heck. Every single time you eat, you set forth a flood of hormones in your body that will determine hunger, energy, and cravings. Will determine, is your heck in check? Now, a lot of people, when you go away, you're going to be like, you're going to leave this room and you're going to say, wow, I heard Jade yesterday, and it was so cool. He's talking about all this cool stuff about fat loss foods and this and that. And someone's going to look at you and say, doesn't matter. It all comes down to calories. Science has proven that. It's calories. Eat less and exercise more. And you're not really going to have an answer for that. I want to give you an answer for that. Very simple. Ask them these two questions. How many calories does sleep have? And how many calories does stress have? I love these questions, and here's why. Because the ridiculousness of the question illustrates the ridiculousness of a calories-only model. Right? Because you can't eat sleep and you can't eat stress. Yet what happens if you're stressed out? What happens if you're sleep-deprived to hunger, energy, and cravings? Do they, do they get balanced or do they go crazy? They go crazy, don't they? Why? Not because of calories, but because of hormones. So here's another thing that I want. The first insight, you can write this down if you want, but the first insight that you should get from this talk is that the body compensates constantly. It compensates. And if it compensates the wrong way by increasing hunger, energy, and cravings, you will end up one of the 95% or worse, one of the 66% who ends up fatter. That's the first thing you need to know. Okay? The second thing you need to know is on this slide here. You cannot do this through changing your nutrition and exercising alone. I don't care if you do it smart. You can't do it. You have to watch out for the lifestyle stuff. You could be exercising all you want. You could be doing just what, what you know, um, I've written about, Kelly and I have written about in our book. You could be doing all the right stuff. If you can't get the lifestyle stuff like sleep and stress under control, you're fighting a losing battle. So that's the second thing you need to understand, right? Second thing, now let's talk about where to start because I want to I wanna make sure when you leave, you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? And I'm just checking, I'm just turning on my, um, my clock here, so just bear with me. Okay, so we're good. This is where I would start. 
I don't want you guys to have had to read um, my book. By the way, how many of you have read Keone's in my book in the room? Great. So many of you have not. I, don't, I want you to leave here and not have to. Okay? And so I'm going to teach you, basically, and I think you guys who have read the book will find this insight useful. Because in the book I talk about three different metabolic types. So here's a confession. Keone and I know there are not three different metabolic types. There are infinite metabolic types. In fact, there are as many metabolic types as are, there are people in this room. This talk is about breaking the dieting trap. If you are going to break the diet trap, you have got to find your metabolic type. The whole idea of giving you three metabolic types was simply to give you a starting place. Simply to get you in the right direction so you could start playing detective. But you can do it this way as well. This is how I want you guys to start. And I'm going to give you some tangible examples in a minute. Think of every meal that you eat in a, on a plate. Now, many of us eat out of packages, and many of us eat in restaurants that don't come in plates. I'm going to cover that in a minute. But for now, think about what you eat on a plate. Half of your plate should be fiber-based foods, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. To me, those are non-starchy vegetables and less sweet fruits. Less sweet fruits to me would be things like berries, apples, pears, maybe citrus. Okay? Half of your plate should be those things. The other half should be lean protein. And then there should be this little sliver of starchy foods, white foods. Now for some, maybe that sliver is this much, right? And for others, it's this much. It's going to vary depending on the person. So it's not about going low carbohydrate and low fat or high carbohydrate and low fat. It's not about that. It's about finding what works for you. How do you know what works for you? I've already told you. What three things do you have now to understand if you're doing the right thing nutritionally for you? Heck, hunger, energy, and cravings. If your heck is in check and you are losing fat, you know you are eating the right diet for you. So you start here. Then you pay attention to heck and you pay attention to your results. Is my waist reducing in size? Is my body getting tighter? Am I noticing changes? And then you begin to adjust. Okay? So let's talk about this really quickly because you're going to need a couple concepts to understand what I'm talking about here. And the first major concept that are there any registered dietitians in the room or nutritionists? So there are a few. And here's the interesting thing. I love nutritionists and registered dietitians. But this is one thing that they don't spend enough time teaching people. Okay? This slide I want you to pay very close attention to. Because for some reason, we think fiber-based foods are whole grains, don't we? We think that kashi goin is fiber. We think that the whole grain bread at Panera is fiber, right? It's not, and I want to show you why it's not. This is a refined grain. This is Cheerios over here, okay? The blue is sugar, the red is fiber, and the green here is water. This is essentially what Cheerios looks like, okay? Now, let's take Kashi Golden Crunch or your favorite Ezekiel bread or something like that. It looks like this. Sugar, fiber, water, right? So a little bit better, right? Which one's going to control heck better? This one or this one? This one, right? Because of why? Because of the fiber in it and because of the water in it, right? A little bit more. If we go to fruit, and of course fruit is fruit's funny, right? Because some fruits look a lot like this. Pineapple, for instance. Other fruits look more like this. But if we go to fruit, here's the sugar, here's the fiber, and here's the water. Wow, look at all that water, right? And then vegetables, non-starchy vegetables. Potato is a starch. Corn is a starch, okay? I'm talking about non-starchy stuff. I'm talking about broccoli and cauliflower and kale and collard greens and things like that. Here's the, here's the sugar, here's the fiber, and here's the water. 
Now, here's what I want you to notice. Look how much fiber whole grains have. What, from the total perspective, which has the most fiber, just in terms of just the total amount? Whole grains, right? They have more fiber than anything else. But look at the ratio between the sugar or starch and the fiber. Which one's best? Vegetables are best, aren't they? And fruits are better, too. Even though they have less total fiber, the ratio is better. And they have this thing, water, that is wonderful at keeping us satiated, right? So that's the distinction you want to make. Again, what's going to keep heck in check? The stuff over here on the right or the stuff over here on the left? The stuff on the right. And so the idea that you're going to have some fancy whole grain spinach tricolored wrap and that's going to help you because it's healthy, and it may be, lose fat versus having a salad is absolutely wrong. And can you see why that's the case after this slide? I'm not trying to, to beat up on rats. They're fine. But eating healthy does not mean you're eating for fat loss. And I'm going to make this a little bit more uh, tangible for you in a minute. But I want to do one more thing, because a lot of people will have, they'll say, but Jade, fat is good for you. Why are you saying lean proteins? Why lean? Why, why low fat uh, protein sources? And simply because of this, if you're going to act like a detective, right, you need to have very distinct rules set up for you. So we don't want fat coming along with protein when that's the case. What I'd like for you to think about is that these are my starch foods. These are my fiber foods, these are my fat foods, and these are my protein foods. So there's nothing wrong with a fatty steak except that you don't know if that's a fat or a protein, right? So all I'm trying to say is in the beginning when you start this lifestyle, think like that. Think what is mostly starch? That's a starch. What is mostly protein? That's a protein. What is mostly fat? That's a fat. And what is mostly fiber? That's a fiber, right? So. Fats, protein and fat. What are beans? Based on that criteria I just told you, what are beans? Are they a fat, are they a protein, or are they a starch? They're a starch, right? But you'll hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm getting my protein from beans. And it's true, they're not going to get a protein deficiency if they eat beans, right? That's good. So they're not going to get protein deficient as long as they eat beans. But that's not going to control heck to the same way that a chicken breast will, that has more protein, right? So it's nothing against beans. Many people can eat beans and lose fat just fine. It's just that, no, that is a starch. I would argue if you eat more beans and less Ezekiel bread, you probably get better fat loss results. But it's still a starch. What about this? Nuts, what are they? They're a fat, right? Now, they have protein in them, too. If you're a vegetarian and you eat nuts, you'll get some protein. You won't become protein deficient. But it's still a fat, right? And what are fatty meats, many of them? Fats, oftentimes. They have more fat than anything else, right? I just want you to make that distinction because when you eat foods and you're trying to assess, is my heck in check? Is my heck balanced? Is hunger, energy, and cravings controlled by what I'm eating? It's a good idea to know what kind of foods you're, you're eating. Now, there's one food that is potentially the worst food for fat loss ever. And the reason why, and much of this comes from rat studies, okay? And I tell you that because much of the research you read in Time Magazine and the New York Times and the Winston-Salem Journal and you know, all, much of this stuff is coming from rat studies. It is instructive. It's not always the case, but guess what happens to rats if you feed them high fat and high sugar chow? <laughs> they will eventually die. It's a good point. Same, so will we. But here's what happens. Naturally, the body compensates, right? So usually when you eat more, the body will compensate by burning more, right? And if you eat less, the body will compensate by eating less. For some reason, when you feed humans and rats lots of this stuff, they lose the ability to self-regulate. They lose the ability to know when they're hungry. They lose the ability to self-regulate their nutrient intake, and their metabolism loses the ability to do that. And there's a whole host of hormonal biochemistry stuff that goes on when you eat stuff like this that I'm not going to get into. Just know, when you see this, when you're sitting at Panera and you see all those things that I absolutely love, you should see a big red light going off in your head that says fat storing atomic bomb. 
fat storing atomic bomb because that's what this stuff will do over time when you eat too much of it you will lose your ability to feel satisfied from meals you will lose your ability to regulate energy and you will be craving stuff all of the time okay so this stuff if there's one food that you want to avoid 90 percent of the time it's this stuff now this does not mean you can't enjoy this food is fun i eat donuts i like donuts i have a donut almost every sunday but i don't monday through saturday Okay, and that's the difference. If you're having potato chips every night and ice cream every night, what are those? Fat and starch? Then there's, no re there's a reason why you can't lose fat. Okay? Now, let's make this very tangible. I don't mean to pick on Golden Corral, and I keep meaning just to say all you could eat buffet. Because I give talks all over, and I was just in Europe, and they, were, they had no idea what this was. So I had to explain it to them. So, Golden Corral or any all you could eat buffet. I'm going to illustrate for you what the fat storing atomic bomb plate looks like, okay? So that you can contrast. Here's what people do. They put french fries on top of pasta, on top of corn, on top of yeast rolls, on top of tater tots, right? And next to all that white food, they go get a big piece of fried chicken or fatty steak or something like that, or fried cod or something like that. And then wedged between all that white food and all that fatty meat, there's a few green beans. Am I right? You guys see this, right? This is what we do. And, and let's not feel bad about it either. I even have the tendency to do this. I notice when I sit down with a plate, I always, I'm always looking at my starch. You know, I, I'll eat that no problem. But the extra broccoli and chicken sitting there, I, I have no problem pushing that aside. I might be full and then someone says, you want dessert? I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'm ready, right? Because of what that stuff does. And you have to understand, you got to get mindful about that. This stuff is normal human stuff. It's nothing to beat ourselves up about. This is normal human stuff. But if we do things the way I'm telling you to do them, we can compensate for this a little bit. Here's what it should look like. Salad on top of broccoli, on top of green beans, on top of collards. And next to all that green stuff, a big, lean piece of meat. Chicken, lean steak, fish. Right? And then wedged between all that stuff, see these couple potatoes sitting here? Wedged between all that green stuff and all that lean protein, some pasta or some bread or potatoes. That is a fat burning plate. That's a big difference, isn't it? And if you just keep that in mind, if you could do this 90% of the time, you would lose fat, most of us, effortlessly. Almost effortlessly. So let's think about this then. What can you begin to do to eat like that plate? This is what most people will choose for breakfast, okay? Kashi Golin Crunch, you know, whatever, okay? Nothing wrong with this. It's not that you can never have cereal again, but you'd be much better off with something like this, a protein smoothie with some blueberries in there or something like that. Why? What is the difference between this and this? Your heck is in check. Your heck is more likely to be in check with this than this. Now, you might say to me, but Jade, not me. This is better for me. And then I would say, fine. If that is really the case for you, then use this. But then at the end of the week, see, did you lose fat? And guess what? If you did, then I'm going to say, that's fine for you. And that's the place that everyone gets confused. They're like, what? Well, we're all different. I mean, I have friends who can walk around and eat this stuff all day long and have no problem and seem to be lean and seem to be functioning just fine. It's confusing. It infuriates me. But it's the truth, <laughs> right? It's the truth. Now, we could argue, is that going to catch up with them later or what? But, you know, here's another example. I want to give you stuff that we do. I, you know, you might end up at Denny's. You might end up at the IHOP. And you might be like, here's what we humans do. We're, again, we're, we're so funny if you just watch our behavior. We're like, oh, we're at IHOP. Time to have the double Grand Slam breakfast. I'm at IHOP, actually, so I, I might as well eat that. Why not just strip away the starch and fat, keep the bacon and the eggs, and add some melon on the side? That's not so hard to do, is it? And guess what? Which is going to keep heck in check? The one over here for most people. And even if it doesn't, where's your, where, how are you going to check yourself? Did you lose fat at the end of the week or not? You need those two things. 
In order to break, in order to stop dieting, you need to have your heck in check and lose fat. Now, your head can be in check and you can just be eating whatever you want, right? I can certainly be at home and eat all the donuts and pasta and everything and feel like, hey, I got no problem with my hunger, energy, and craving. I feel great. Well, my fat loss results are going to tell me. It's going to show up on my waist. So that's how you know. Let's continue with this. What about this? Interestingly, to me, all these meals I'm showing you, let me go back to this one. This is a Golden Corral meal in disguise. It's disguised. But that's a Golden Corral meal. All that white stuff, right? Fatty protein, and then wedged between all that, there's like a glass of orange juice there, which I would say is just more white stuff, really. Again, Golden Corral meal in disguise. Is it not? White, 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 fatty meat, a little bit of green stuff. Instead, if you're going to have that, why not just strip off the bun? and double up and just pile up the lettuce, right? I show you this not to say that this is somehow healthy or this is the best bet. It's basically to say that this and this, one is going to keep your heck in check and result in fat loss. One is not going to result in fat loss for the majority of people. How about this? What is that? Golden Corral meal in disguise again. They're all over the place. They creep up on you constantly. How do I deal with this? Just throw off the bread. Now, I'm not saying bread, by the way, I'm not saying bread is evil. I'm not saying go on the Atkins diet. What I'm saying is that have five bites of this thing with the bread on, and then just realize if I keep having, if I eat this whole thing, I'm, it's a fat storing issue for me. I can have five bites. Enjoy five bites of the bread. Even if it's white bread, who cares? Enjoy it. It's going to benefit you. But if you do all of it, you're running into problems. So take five bites and then strip it down and eat the protein and the vegetables. Now, here's the thing. How many of you can do this? Right? We can do this. We might not want to do it. It might not be fair. We might think this tastes better. But I'm basically just showing you what it's going to take. If you really want results and you really want to break the diet trap, I'm telling you what it takes. It's up to you to go off and do it. But this is literally what it takes. It is not hard. What is hard is the fact that we want what we want. Again, us humans are funny, even as adults. We'll stomp our feet, cry in the sand, I want it, I want it, I want it. Right? Well, if you want body change, you can't have it. Okay? This is how it works for the majority of people. And it's going to vary. How do you know? Heck is in check, and you're getting fat loss. Again, fettuccine Alfredo. What does fettuccine Alfredo signal to you? Fat and starch. Bum, 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 fat storing atomic bomb. That's what that is, right? And alcohol. Why not this? Chicken and broccoli with a little bit of pasta on the side. Potatoes, salmon, collard greens, right? Now, you might say, but Jade, I love chicken alfredo. It's my favorite. I love it too. Then have it one time a week, twice a week. Don't eat it every single day. You can't. If you want to, fine, just realize that it, your love of this is more important to you than getting results. And that's fine. I mean, that really is fine, actually. But just let it be then. Relax. Stop stressing about it and just have your fettuccine Alfredo and be happy with where you are. How about these? We live out of bags. Our culture, right? We live out of bags. So a lot of people say, Jade, why are you showing these people all this food? Because I'm like... Do you guys know that 70 million people every single year eat fast, or every single day eat fast food? And 40 million of those people eat most of their meals in the fast food. So what are we going to do? Say, hey, you need to go to Whole Foods and get organic salmon and kale to, to help these people? No, we're going to get them started. And as they feel better, they'll start making better choices. These snacks, how about these? A protein bar, an apple, some beef jerky. How about this? I just did these on the Foreman Grill. Right? Hot dogs, instead of the buns, romaine lettuce. Apples and peanut butter. Some people will point this out and say, but Jay, didn't that fat and sugar together? Well, remember, an apple is what? Mostly, it's fiber. It's fiber. It's a fiber-based food, and there's a ton of water in there. So you're not going to really be able to overeat that. Right? Some people can, and you'll know at the end of the week, if you gain fat, that maybe apples and peanut butter was a problem. I'm betting that for most of you, apples and peanut butter was not the problem. 
right? <laughs> so let me just check time. So we're at 15 minutes. Good. Because I really want to give you the formula, okay? So just real quick, by a show of hands, are you guys following me right now? And this, does this make sense as far as to-dos, right? I want you to have real to-dos. I know in the real world when you leave here, this stuff is hard. Okay? It's hard because you have to make those individual choices every single time. No one is saying this is easy. But what I am telling you, if you do what I tell you to, what I'm showing you to do, and you pay attention to is my heckin' check, and am I losing fat, you can escape the diet trap. You will not rebound and yo-yo. And then you can just practice, 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 practice. I like to say if you want to become an, an amazing violin player, Right? You're not going to, you know, just, uh, you know, fool around once in a while. You're going to practice every single day. And that's what you have to do with this before it becomes normal. All of a sudden, the idea, th this is what's funny for me now. When I have a burger, having the bun on is a little bit odd for me. And you guys have to understand is burgers, I love burgers like I love donuts. I'm the sixth guy. You know, five guys, I'm the sixth one. I love that stuff as much as you do. But guess what? I've practiced so much now that it's not a big deal for me. And I know if I can do that, so can you. So it takes practice. Now, here's the other thing about, remember I said a couple things. So let's just go back real quick because I like to review. The first thing that you should have gotten from this talk, right, is that weight loss and fat loss is not the same. To know if you're, if you're going to be one of the 95% or one of the 66% who's going to regain the weight and be fatter, all you have to do is pay attention to compensations, right? If you're hungry all the time, if you have unstable energy and you're craving stuff all the time, you will be the 95%. It will not work over the long run. And a solution that works in the short run that does not work in the long run is a solution that doesn't work. Okay, that's the first thing you sort of need to understand. The next thing you need to understand is that there's no magic fat burning foods. The foods that will help you lose fat over the long run are foods that are going to keep heck in check and at the end of the week make you lose fat. Okay, now we're at this point. Oh, and the, the, a third thing. A third thing is that diet and exercise are not all that it takes. Lifestyle is important. Sleep is important and stress is important. You could be doing everything right and get no results because you refuse to sleep or you can't sleep and you, or you refuse to control stress. Let's talk a, a bit about exercise just real quick. All you have to know is this. Again, does your exercise keep your heck in check? That's the reason. There's nothing wrong with going running on a treadmill and jogging. There's nothing wrong with that. It's healthy for your heart. It does some really nice things for you. The biggest problem with it is it oftentimes, for many, many people, makes them crave donuts, which is what the time, this Time Magazine article was essentially showing. All the research that shows these people who are doing this all the time come home and crave donuts and then ruin it. Why? Because they weren't paying attention to heck. Right? So you guys understand? So if you're going jogging all the time, you're like, oh, I got, I'm going to go take a job. You know, back in the 80s, I remember people like, oh, I got to lose a couple pounds and take a job. Well, what happened was they took a job and then they took a, an exit to the donut factory because they were, their heck was not in check. So when you exercise, you need to think about optimizing your hormones as well. Let me tell you um, what those things are. Nothing wrong with this. I don't want you to stop doing this. For some reason, we, again, humans, I do it too, but you hear someone say, oh, don't do cardio, lift weights. So then you're like, oh, cardio's bad and weights are good. That's not what we're saying. We're essentially saying, don't do only this, do this stuff too. Do this stuff, this is my sister-in-law, by the way, and she, she's just phenomenal, right? But look at that, look at the physique on, on Jillian. That did not come from running miles and miles and miles. It came from some of that maybe, but it mostly came from the way she was eating and this stuff. And for whatever reason, we just don't want to do this stuff. Part of it, I think, is not our fault. Because if you pick up any journal article or anything like that in popular media, what's it going to say? It's going to say, do this, even still. It's going to say, do this. What I would say is do what keeps your heck in check and do what keeps muscle on your body. Okay. So here is a very simple 
solution for you. One to three days a week, do weight training. I really don't care how you do it. Do it at home with dumbbells. Do it at the gym. Get someone to help you do it. We have a circuit in our book that teaches you an easy way to do this at home. Doesn't mean that there's anything magical about that. We, Kelly and I came up with it to make it easy for you. That's all. One to two days of cardio. I don't care. Walk, jog. If you like to run, if you're a marathon runner or something, there's nothing wrong with that. Just realize if you want to keep muscle on your body, you have to normalize it, regulate it. And then walk daily. For whatever reason, we think this is exercise. This is not exercise. This is transportation. This is necessity. <laughs> it really is not. It really is not. We think it is, but it isn't. Okay? Now, wrapping up a little bit, and I'm going to take you through the scenario and then we'll, then we'll, uh, we'll break. But you should know the answer to this now. How do you know Let's just do a quiz, all of us together. How do you know if you're dieting or not? How do you know if you're dieting and you're on the verge of becoming the 95% or the 66%? Right. Your heck is not in check. You're hungry all the time. Your energy's in balance, and you're having cravings like crazy. That's how you know. How do you know that you're being successful? Your heck is in check, and you're losing fat. So you might say, Jade, how do I know if I'm losing fat versus just weight standing on the scale? Very simply, let's not make, you don't need to get one of these fancy scales. If you're losing weight and the inches are going down, and, or you're not losing weight and the inches are going down, right? You're losing fat. Remember the, remember the guy and the girl standing on the scale next to each other? It's not the weight, it's more the circumference. And you also can just check. If you're starting to look skinny and flabby, you're losing too much muscle. Right? Your body should be getting tighter and the inches should be going down. Very simple. Very simple. Don't make it more complex. Now, I'm going to show you a process to play the detective because ultimately you guys are going to leave here and you're going to be like, this is great. I learned this cool stuff from Jade. I don't want to be the dieter. I don't want to be the 95%. I'm going to do things differently. Well, I'm going to tell you a very interesting process. Start doing what I told you to do. Right, which is this. Let's just review real quick. Here's what you should be doing. The opposite of the Golden Corral plate. Does everyone have that in their head? That's all you need to know. The opposite of the Golden Corral plate. That's how you eat 90% of the time. Don't make it more complex. Just think about what people are doing at Golden Corral and do the opposite. <laughs> and understand how to find Golden Corral in disguise, right? Everyone knows what Golden Corral in disguise looks like now, right? So do the opposite. That's the first thing. And then take this process. First assess, then investigate, then modify. So here's what it looks like. And I'm going to leave this up for you guys to write this down. But here's the thing. How do you assess? I told you, right? Two things. Heck is in check, and I'm losing fat or not, right? So it's either yes, 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 no, no, yes, or no, no, right? And then I'm going to investigate. If my heck is in check and I'm losing fat, what am I going to do? Keep doing it. Keep doing it. I'm going to jump up and down for joy. I'm not going to try to speed it up or anything like that. I'm going to be like, I found my formula. That's all I need to do. If my heck is in check and there's no change or there's fat gain, what do I do? We'll cover that in just a minute. So no change or fat gain. Well, first of all, you got half of the battle won. Your heck is in check, right? No change or fat gain. What does that mean? I got to make some adjustments. That's all that means. I got to make some adjustments to what? Diet first, exercise second, lifestyle third. That's the order you want to go in. Always look to your diet first, exercise second, lifestyle third. Now, heck is not in check and you're losing fat. You're dieting. You're dieting. Because guess what? In this case, you're losing muscle too, and it's not going to last. So what do you need to do? Get your heck in check. How do you get your heck in check? What's the best way? Water, fiber, protein, right? Chicken and broccoli, the opposite of the Golden Corral plate and more of it. Heck's not in check and no change or fat gain. 
This is where most people will be, by the way. Guess what that is? Sitting at home on the couch, basically not doing anything. Or you really have to work hard to get this under control. And then you modify. Adjust your nutrition, adjust your exercise, adjust your lifestyle. And it's always in that order. It's not I need to go run more. It's not I need to lift more weights. It's I got to get my nutrition under control. Nutrition is 90% of this. Okay, so nutrition first, tweak it. Do one thing at a time. Exercise next, adjust lifestyle. If you're a third shift worker and you're doing everything right, what's the adjustment that, that may need to be made? The lifestyle piece. And I'll tell you, a lot of these third shift workers, they simply cannot get the results because they can't adjust their lifestyle. And that's part of what's going on with a lot of us. So to control heck, Let's not, don't get too caught up on what's the slide. You tell me, how do you control heck? The opposite of what? The golden corral plate. The opposite of the golden corral plate and find it when it's in disguise. That means increase protein, fiber, and water. Increase or decrease fat, right? Why am I saying increase or decrease? Because you might be someone who thrives on less fat or someone that thrives on more and you're not going to know until you play detective. And I know that makes you mad because you want me, you want, Jay, tell me. Well, I just told you, you're going to have to play detective. Same with starch. Increase or decrease, play detective. Okay? To burn fat, I'll give you a hint. If heck is in check, which is your first goal, right, and you're not burning fat, the next thing you need to do is first decrease your starchy carbohydrates. That doesn't work, then you can increase them. A little bit. See if that works. If that doesn't work, attack fat next. Okay? Ultimately, you have to remember that this person and this person weigh exactly the same. This person, heck is in check, is not going to have metabolic compensations, right? And is not going to rebound back. This person will. This is the dieter. This is the person who's following the method that I told you. Okay? Eat to control heck. That's, if you get nothing else out of this talk, that's it. Exercise to burn fat and build muscle and control heck. Sleep and control stress. That is what it's all about. These three pieces. Okay? So, Thank you so much. I'm at JT on Twitter.